US lawmakers are looking to split the stimulus package into two to try and break a renewed stalemate. The more contentious points could be isolated, and that's the sum of around $160 billion. And it includes issues like state and local aid and liability protections for businesses. The remaining near $750 billion contains all the items garnering wider support from things like jobless benefits to small business loans. It would also include aid for airlines among the pandemic's hardest hit industries. Joining us now, Sarah Nelson, president of the Association of Flight Attendants. Great to have you back with us. I, I vividly remember our conversation last time and I was hoping by this point, Sarah, you'd have cash aid to, to those that you represent. Not the case. How hopeful are you this time and how are they doing? Well, it's very difficult. So we have had people out on furlough since October 1st. The moratorium on furloughs with the airlines ended at that time. So there have been more furlough announcements since then. Uh, people have, because of our contracts, have a period of time where the companies in some cases are covering the cost of COBRA, the very high cost of the health insurance plan. But that is ending as well. So without a paycheck and without any kind of support on that health care at the end of this month when 12 million people are set to fall off of any kind of unemployment insurance at all. 17 million children are going hungry. 30 to 40 million people are at risk of losing their homes. In addition to that, the people that I represent are definitively losing their health care and uh, trying to figure out how they're going to survive. So it is absolutely confounding that nothing has happened to this point. And I believe when we spoke before, I shared that we actually had a program that we had hoped would be provided for every other industry. We're 80% union in the airline industry, mm -hmm. and we forced the airlines to come to us on a workers first package that required all the government money to go through to our pay, our health care, uh, no cuts in hourly rates, continued service to all of our communities, and a cap on executive compensation and ban on stock buybacks. So all the things that we hate about those corporate bailouts, we took care of too. And now here we are with the distribution of the vaccine and we need all the planes up in the air distributing that vaccine to make the demand. But that requires people, planes and routes to be in place. And that doesn't happen just overnight. So we've got a humanitarian crisis and we also have a real infrastructure crisis in order to attack this virus and get to a place where we can recover. I mean, you raise all the most important points here. There's an ethical and a moral duty here for for lawmakers to act. It's, it's hard, I'm sure, for you to explain uh, to those that you represent and say, look, uh, actually lawmakers agree on a package, whether they're Democrats yeah. or Republicans. It's just trying to agree some bigger deal. Sarah, what's your message to, to lawmakers at this moment? Because you're incredibly eloquent in, in pointing out the, the need. Look, every single day counts. So if we think about this, if we think about just, if you want to look at a balance sheet or you want to look at the infrastructure that needs to be in place to attack this virus, to have a larger structure, to be able to take care of people, get through this pandemic, every day counts because the longer you go, the more people who fall off of certification to fly the aircraft that we need to move the vaccine around. But every day counts for those individuals too. There are, there are people who have been out of work now for two months and are trying to decide. They have been told by lawmakers it's coming. Relief is imminent. And so they've made personal decisions in their lives not to leave their apartments that are near the airport so they can do their jobs. They're hanging on just barely, but they're going to have to get rid of that now and pay the extra month's rent in order to break those leases early or be in a position where they won't have a home if that relief gets in place and now they won't have a place to meet their obligations on the job. So every single day counts and people have been left in absolute shock over the inaction of this government, especially when there is so much agreement. They have got to get this done they cannot wait to do this. And we've got to talk really about what this relief money is. When we simply talk about state and local, it's very easy to make that a line item. But what is that? That's sanitation jobs. That's firefighters' jobs. Yeah. That is teachers' jobs. Those are people who also pay into the economy. So the lawmakers have got to set aside 
either who's going to get the credit or who's going to get the blame and understand that we are in a hundred year crisis here. And without action, we're really going to fall off the cliff and have a much more difficult time to recover. More people are likely to die of poverty and homelessness than the virus itself. Do you think it's politics coming before people, Sarah? Because you're advocating for every single person in this nation that's struggling and not just the airline workers that you, you represent. Do you think the lawmakers are putting politics first? I think there's been a heavy dose of an assessment of politics. And any time we address an issue about whether or not something is politically possible or whether or not it's going to help or hurt someone politically, then we've lost our way. Uh, because that is not going to encourage consensus. That's not going to encourage people to coming together and solve problems the way that we're supposed to. I think mm -hmm. about the flight attendants who've been on the front lines of this coronavirus from the beginning going to work, continuing that essential service for our communities, even the people who don't fly, repatriating Americans to get home to their loved ones during that time. And now they're out of work. Now they're not being taken care of and not given the support to do our jobs. The people who remain on the jobs today because we don't have that the, that support from the government to hold up that infrastructure. There's more and more stress as airlines are forced to cut costs and encourage pe encouraging people to come to work sick. These are problems that continue to get created because the public health emergency collides with the financial emergency. And Congress has got to set any, uh, any political assessment aside. If that starts to enter their minds, get rid of it. Focus on the people. Focus on the people on the front lines. We're going to be the ones to rebuild this economy, and we're the ones that we've got to focus on to make sure that we eradicate this virus. Because as long as one person has it and we're not able to treat it, we're all at risk. Amen. Sarah, I've not heard anybody argue it better. Thank you so much for coming on our show. You give me a frog in my throat. Sarah Nelson, thank you once again. And uh, we're thinking of you, thank you and all Jared. your people. Thank you.